ladies and gentlemen, we can begin. <laughs> or it takes, well, we're already sitting down. Uh, we'll call this uh, special committee of the whole meeting to order. Roll call, please. Foreign? Yes. Excused. Excused. Falk is excused. excused. Bowers? Yeah. Decker? Excused. Hammond? Present. Hannah? Excused. Heideman? Here. Path? Here. Kittleson is here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Raisler? Here. Sampson? Excused. Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Here. And Wangaman? Here. Our quorum is present. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need uh, approval of the previous minutes. So move. Second. Motion made. Montemayor, seconded by Hammond. Approve the previous minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye opposed. Motion carries. Now, before we begin on the discussion on 2011 budget, uh, the president had asked uh, for a few minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a, a brief uh, message here. Uh, wanted to let everyone know council document 1631 regarding cell phone usage during common council meetings was received by all of us. Uh, the communication was referred to the Committee of the Whole for further discussion. I guess I would like to say as a friendly reminder to everyone, please make sure that all electronic devices that you carry with you are turned off and out of sight uh, during common council meetings. Um, as you already know, uh, cell phones and other electronic devices can cause unnecessary distractions to those around us. And I would ask out of courtesy and respect, unless of course an emergency arises, that you refrain from using these items during council meetings. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you, President Kilson. Um, one um, idea would be a beginning of the council year to uh, enact the council policy of the uh, bucket and can. Phone goes off or rings or vibes, bucket and can. At the end of the year, maybe we'll give a donation or, or do something for nice for the Sioux or the mayor or something with that money. But uh, uh, do try to uh, refrain. Uh, it's good f uh, um, in, two, in two hands. It's, it's, it's good. Um, the public knows that we're taking this seriously. Uh, we're not distracted by outside I addition. Uh, and yet, further I item is if we're, there's no way of knowing if we're texting for the all persons. Uh, and if we are texting for the all persons, those texts become public records. So I'd urge you not to do so, just to keep that clean uh, as well. Again, there's no way of knowing. Uh, so, all right, moving on. Discussion on the 2011 budget. Uh, the reason why I wanted to have this meeting today, and I did invite all the department heads, uh, as well as the mayor and uh, the public, uh, to attend. Uh, on the state level, uh, when, especially when it comes down to budget time, uh, the two parties meet as a caucus to kind of describe, um, you know, throw out ideas, figure out what, what the, the plan of attack was going to be. Uh, we obviously don't have two parties here. We have one party, and we are the party of the taxpayer. I'd like to represent them. The other difference is that, unlike the caucuses in Madison, we have to meet in public. So uh, a little bit different here. Uh, hopefully, though, that uh, we all feel comfortable enough with each other to um, uh, hear some ideas, uh, toss them around, debate them. I don't, you know, we cannot take any action this evening. Uh, there is no document in front of us. It is simply um, informational and question and answer. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question of the department head, please, you know, signal which one. We'll call them up. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can kind of uh, get some ideas out here. Um, the budget as presented by the mayor is the, the acting document. Uh, so we're just ha simply having discussion on that document. Uh, any changes to that would have to be done uh, on the, after the public hearing on the 22nd. Uh, 24th and finally the 29th uh, are the meetings that we have at least scheduled at least unless we have a budget done before that um, so again I urge you to to um, listen to ideas throw some things out there ask things like what would happen if we did this um, who would be affected if we did this that kind of thing um, so uh, this meeting could be five minutes it could be three hours it's up to you and how much information you would like to do uh, and would anybody like to begin Alderman Hammond. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Alderman um, Hammond, uh, as informal, you may sit in this, oh, in this session. Yes. Well, I got to stick because I got to hand something out. So. Ah, very good. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a helper. Um, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to hand this out um, in order to kind of expedite. Oh, thank you. Um, We 
we, um, when I say we, um, the finance office, uh, the mayor's office, um, and myself have been working to look at different options and I uh, think we came up with um, what we feel is a, a pretty good solution um, to this. Sure. Um, we should have enough extra for um, Mike and Bob to have one as well. And if there's any left, feel free to send them backwards. If we take a look at the um, top portion, um, again, you see the original proposed reductions, um, the revised reductions, um, and then what you have. So, for example, police department original reductions are 441. Um, we're looking at basically a $213,000 um, amount that we would need to keep the police officers on the force. Same thing with fire, public works, so on and so forth, um, and the funding for the SCEDC. So what we're looking at is a million dollar deficit, a uh, million plus. Um, leaving the tax rate the same as it is um, of $8.35 um, versus the uh, lowering, uh, or what the, it came back in at this year of $8.27 uh, would free up about 200000 um, the Public Works, um, our partners in the labor union have uh, agreed to, on there it says uh, no raise, but essentially they're going to decrease um, or increase their contribution to the medical, um, and that'll be about 130, uh, and then four full-time people um, through retirement would, would come off the books, that's 434. Um, the um, contingency, we have a contingency in there, um, taking that out of about 100,000. The city development manager, um, from you know, Paulette's old position, um, uh, not funding that would stay in the table of organization, but wouldn't be funded for 2011. Um, the uh, administration, the motor vehicle fund, when looking at that, um, uh, taking about 125,000 out of that, um, we looked at how much time our um, city. Um, employees, finance, purchasing, HR, the attorney's office is spending, and um, there just wasn't, an, it wasn't accounting for all the time, so that would be 125000 And then from capital park improvements, um, again, through the capital improvements budget, there's going to be a significant amount put into our parks this year. So that gives us a total of one, uh, $1.19,000. Uh, Solves the gap, keeps the firefighters, keeps the uh, in, uh, individuals in the DPW, and also uh, funds the police department. And I guess I would entertain any questions. I don't know. All right, since we just received that, um, would anybody have questions or comments on the, what you've seen so far? I, I guess I have one question. Yes. Go ahead. Um, just looking at the uh, taking the 100000 from the contingency, I, I know we're looking at, um, I, I guess the question I have is I'm, I'm reference to library. Mm -hmm. uh, would this meet the satisfaction of the money they need, or would this doesn't do anything um, with the library? Um, it's going to primarily deal with the police, fire, and DPW. Okay. Um, I think you know, as the resolution that we put forth on Monday, I think um, we may want to wait until the attorney general responds um, to our request um, to find out whether we'd meet maintenance of effort. Because depending on how that comes back. We may be meeting you already. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. So we know that we're going to get an answer from the Attorney General by Monday? Um, don't know for sure, but I would suspect in an issue like this, we probably, and if we don't, then we'll have to deal with it then. But um, the letter's been drafted, uh, or in the process of being drafted, and it'll be sent out. I can't guarantee, obviously, as, as Attorney McLean mentioned on Monday, but. Uh, I would suspect with an issue like this that we'd hopefully get an answer. But until we know for sure um, whether they're going to answer or not. So then w with this as it stands, the library is out of its separate issue? Is what we you're did us? not increase any funding for the library over the, over the proposed budget. From the, um, from, from the budget as proposed right. to us. Yeah, from the proposed budget. Which would be the 300,000 cut. 294. Yeah. 294, excuse me. Okay. And that would be a question if uh, you're looking at finding a way of reestablishing that, that obviously whatever, you know, we add back in there has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so again, that's why we have discussion points here. Mm -hmm. Not making, coming to a solution today at least. Alderman Wangaman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, for one, could not support a budget that uh, does not fund the library to the maintenance of effort. I mean, I really think there's got to be some way we can come up with this. And I guess I'm gonna ask a what if question. What if we don't get an answer back from there? Have you got plan B? Um, no. Um, you know, the library is the cornerstone of our, of our educational system. And for less than $3,000 not to fund it is absolutely ludicrous. I mean, I, I can't imagine this. The, um, to clarify. Um, yeah, I would like to. The 300, the 3,000 or so, the 2,840, it would be an increase from the current year's budget, which means we actually have to find uh, just under 300,000. We'd have to find to do that. $297,845. Yep. But, but we go through this every year with the library. And you know, let's face it, education is prime these days. It's foreign countries such as the Asian countries are outstripping us left and right all over the place. And we can't afford not to do this. I mean, to do it just would make no sense whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's one of the most important things that we can do. Uh, what's more important than education? And the library is the main repository of education in Sheboygan County. I was just telling Alderman Bowers, I can remember years ago when an alderman made a remark and said, why does the library have to buy new books every year? Don't they have enough? I mean, that shows a complete lack of understanding of how, the how important it is. And I'm afraid that some people have that kind of an attitude. And uh, you know, I find it reprehensible. I really think that this is primary in our uh, duties as an alderman is to fund the library to the necessary extent. And just to clarify, the plan here was simply brought forth by one particular older person who did, you worked with did that just on your own? No, I was in conjunction with the finance department and the mayor's office. Finance department and the mayor's office. This is just one plan. We're not voting on accepting this or not. Right, I understand. Um, if you desire to you know, look for increasing the funding, refining the just under 300,000, you know, that's, that's up for discussion. You know, um, and I guess the question then, are you looking for the tax levy hike or what are you looking for for that aspect? So that's under discussion. Helen Bowers, you're next. Uh, yes, I have a question regarding the budget to insurance. It seems to be a $2 million increase in claims. I've been trying to investigate this and I've talked to our two of the three attorneys that I know we have on a retainer. I haven't been able to get an answer why our uh, reserves are up or our claims are up, and I believe, I don't, I don't think this is in health insurance, I think this is in other insurance. Could someone explain the $2 million increase? Director Modio, do you have that information? Would you like to respond? Yes, we If you would please the mic, because we we're on televised, so. Thank you. Uh, this year when we went out for insurance quotes, um, we got uh, a quote uh, and we picked UMR. Uh, and UMR is just a claims processor, if you will, an administrator. Uh, but the value of the claims that the city pays is based on the claims submitted by the employees who use that service. Based on our experience to date, which was for the past 12 months, uh, they do an actuarial comp compilation and come up with a minimum claim value and a maximum claim value based on the exposure we used as a, as a city over the past 12 months. Um, uh, the minimum value was 7.4 million, I believe, um, and the maximum value was 8.5 million. Uh, in the past, um, the reserves required um, to keep into the, the uh, fund, excuse me, uh, should be at a 25 to 30 percent level, which basically funds about 90 days worth of claims. So for example, uh, if we were a business or if the city went out of business, uh, whatever claims that were in process normally take 90 days to bring to fruition and get paid. So the reserve balance we need to keep is roughly 90 days worth or 25 percent of the claims value. 
Uh, in the past, uh, the claims value reserve has been used for other purposes. Uh, the fund balance uh, as of the end of 2009 was roughly a million dollars on seven and a half million dollars of claims. So if you do the math, it says we were short six or seven hundred thousand dollars. It was the city's position that we fund to the maximum level uh, in an effort to increase the fund balance so that we would have a minimum of 90 days claims payable on hand. It doesn't mean that we're going to get eight and a half million dollars worth of claims, hopefully maybe 7.8 or 7.9, and we'd have the ability to keep $600,000 in the reserve balance. That's what we used. If Are you it. talking about health, health claims or? Uh, Medical. Uh, health? Yes. Yes. I'm not talking health. I'm talking the next page. What page is that? Uh, claims 540205. Claims 3,686. Okay. That was in 2010, the right. approved budget. Right. These go to 5.6. Right. This is what the city pays. The balance is paid through, contri through, paid. through employee contributions. Mm -hmm. so this isn't health insurance, though. This is something else. I know this would be difficult, no, those are health uh, Director Amodio. Huh? I'm sorry? I know it would be difficult, especially on the, on I'm sorry, those reaching the mic in the book here, just if you can give us direction of where we're at. Right here is the health. Um, page 99. This is the revenue piece. Fund 704. It's the health insurance fund. This is particularly looking at object number or general ledger number 540205. Yep. This is this is the revenue piece. Yep. This Active. is how we okay. estimate how we pay for the claims. Yep. And then on the second page are the expenses that equal the revenues for the claims <coughs> we've estimated. So the claims are up to $2 million, yeah. the reserves. But no, not the reserves. The estimate for claims paid. We've got stop loss, and we've got actually prescription drugs, right. which is added to that for a total of 7.8. Right. Um, and these are the administrative fees that we pay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's retiree claims that are not in these. These are mm -hmm. active employees. These are retirees. These are the prescriptions for the retirees. And these are the... Um, claims for retirees with Medicare. Okay. Here. And uh, these are re these uh, are actually people in the city that are on COBRA. Yep. Which means they pay for their own premiums, but are covered. Okay. So this over here is uh, uh, what we're paying. <clears throat> we estimate what the premium is going to be. Yes. All right. So this should add up to all this, right? Which it does. Okay. It's a 12.5. I see that. Okay. Now, I guess what I uh, questions I have on the city's uh, other insurance, which is liability and auto. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been able to find out how much we're paying out in claims each year. These are the three law firms I've been able to find out that have represented us in the past year. Okay. Conway's a local. One is for, uh, uh, this one is uh, uh, Rosenberg. I believe that's an out-of-town firm too. Okay. So the deductible is $400,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Claims charged to the department has been the same. 2010 and 2011, mm -hmm. correct? Okay, so we're actually we're reserving or setting aside the same amount of money. Yes. So did we pay out this last year, 400,000? I'd have to look, I don't know that off the top. Okay, because it would seem to me if we didn't pay out the 400,000 and we could take that 400,000 off and put it in here. Mm -hmm. Pay off half of it. Yeah. True? Let's say we paid 300,000 last year. That would leave us 100000 here, so we wouldn't have to uh, allocate 400000 this year, right? We wouldn't have allocated the same if it was less. 
So we did pay out this last year? I'll have to find that out for sure. Okay. I don't know off the top. Uh, and then our premium, I guess this is a premium for automobile and uh, probably a public official bond, 130000 Yep. each year. Yes. That's not a premium, and that, that's more or less the premium we pay. That's yeah. the premium we pay for all of the city. Okay. Vehicles. So I guess what we're looking at here is to see if we paid out 400000 last year. If we didn't, then we could add some of that or take it off this sure. year, right? Huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. Could you do that for me, please? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Okay. If you would, uh, for the sake of the microphone, people at home, give a review of what you two gentlemen had discussed. Yeah. And we could hear in the immediate area, but you know, people at home probably okay, haven't. Yes, tell so. yes uh, what we were going through was liability insurance, um, and there's a portion in the liability insurance that is for, de uh, for deductibles. And if we didn't pay out the deductible amount that we had budgeted, uh, we'll look at that to see if there's anything we can do to reduce that cost in the liability insurance fund. Alan Riesler. If you just want to stay up one second, Jim, there's one other follow-up for you. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Alderman Hanna and, and others who put the document together. Um, I think it's great Hannah? work. Hannah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hammond. Ow. See, now I actually make the same mistake. Okay. We're going to so. call it consigulary from now yeah. on. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for the work you put. I think it's a great starting point, uh, and hopefully a lot of uh, conversation can be generated uh, on Monday and next Wednesday. Uh, I guess one of my final comments for, for this part of it, and I'll leave it late for tonight, is um, on the library. I guess I just want to warn everybody that I will probably try to introduce um, taking the money uh, from the contingency, the additional, and adding it on there um, for the library for the 294 or 300, whatever, just to add it on. So I, I guess I want everybody to know that I'm going to do that so that they can think about it and if that's something that they want to support. And I guess in repaying that money, I kind of follow back up on what uh, Alderman uh, Bauer said, is at the end of 2010, there is hopefully going to be some additional money that will be out there, I'm hoping, for things that bills that are, are didn't meet the total amount that we thought they would. You mean as far as budget versus actual for 2010? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping, and maybe from that, we can take that money, put it back into the contingency, I think, where we go anyway, and replenish the money of the money that we're spending. So I don't know if that's a viable option or if that's going to, you know. Like that. normally, normally when we fund, when we fund the library, we fund it from taxes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, just not, looking, I'm just looking at, well, I'm looking at making the motion to, from the contingency fund. Okay. And then hoping that the money that's left over from the, the I don't want to say carryover is the right word, but money that's not spent from 2010 would then be able to go back in the contingency to cover maybe all of the 400000 that we would use. Maybe, I don't know, I guess we have to see how much is, is there. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was warned. Okay. Since we're uh, talking about the contingency fund, um, one of the members of the public had uh, actually, you know, the representative of the ASME had talked about, you know, lowering the amount that we have in the contingency fund. Correct. Uh, I had... A while back, I understood that we really couldn't go below what we had in terms of the uh, bond rating agencies. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Um, at the end of 2009, um, we had in about $11.8 million, $11 million in the general fund balance. Uh, all but 3.8 of that uh, was designated, if you will. $3.8 million was undesignated. Um, in going back and looking um, through the documents, in 2005, uh, there was a resolution passed by the council that said that we should reserve or designate $4 million of the general fund balance for working capital for the first few months of the new year. In addition, it also said that we should look at the prior year's fund balance and spending and any amount that we were overspent to the prior year we should increase that designated reserve of four million dollars <throat> by that same percentage um, we have not done that um, as a practice um, when we go back and look at it it would take that four million dollars to about four point five million dollars because spending since 2005 uh, in the general fund has increased significantly so it said it would leave us roughly $3.3 million uh, in the general fund as undesignated reserves as we know it at the end of 2009. 
uh, and that would put us at about 26 or 27 percent. Ehlers, uh, who represents us in bond offerings um, and represents us with Moody's, uh, said the average uh, that they use as a general fund reserve that doesn't get questioned by Moody's is 25 percent. Uh, so if we look, we got a couple percentage points on 3.3 3 .3 million dollars. Uh, it's worth some money, um, but certainly not 1.7 or 2 million dollars. If that answers the question. It does. Thank you. Alderman Castor next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was my understanding that we were short 1.7 million with the library money. Is there? That's not correct. So it was we were short two million dollars. Yes. Okay. So is there anything the one, else? The 1.7 million dollars was the general fund deficit. The three hundred thousand dollars was the Mead Library fund deficit. Okay. So is there anything else that I should know about? No. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Uh, I just wanted to kind of follow up on Director Amodio's comment. Um, first off, I think we need to, it's, it's not a contingency fund, it's a, you know, the general fund balance, it's the checkbook. Um, it's, it's not a, a contingency fund. Um, and secondly, when we went through the bond rating, you know, be, there are many factors working against us right now. For, fortunately, we've been able to keep our bond rating where it's at, but there are factors that are working against us. You know, our, the median household income is low um, or lower than it's been. Um, obviously, the job losses and all those types of things impact that. So um, you know, it would be easy to say take it out of the fund balance, um, but that's going to cause us to have a higher cost, could possibly have a higher cost of borrowing um, in the future, which you know, would, could end up costing us even more than you know, whatever the 100000 that we pull out of it. Um, so I think we just you know, need, again, I understand there's a lot of passion on both sides of that, but we also need to look at what's best for the long-term viability of what we're trying to accomplish. So um, I guess I would just caution people when they're looking at using this $3.3 .3 million as a slush fund, um, there's more, to, more tied into it than just a $3.3 .3 million checkbook. Yeah, there, there's, there's some new legislation that's out too that changes uh, in uh, government accounting standards. It's called GASB 54. Uh, that went into effect uh, in 2009. It's effective for cities. Um, as of June 2011. And what it really does is it takes a look at the general fund specifically uh, reserve balance and then breaks it out into four categories versus the two we know today, which is designated and undesignated funds uh, for special purpose. What it also is doing is look at special revenue funds um, and see if the special revenue funds really qualify to the new standard definition. Uh, which says that those funds are set up for specific purposes. There are specific streams of revenue that flow into that that support the majority of the expenditures out of those special revenue funds. And when you look at the city's books, we've probably got 10 or 11 special revenue funds, and there might be several that come close to not qualifying and could end up into the general fund. Um, an example would be ambulance fund. Uh, not using that because it's been a topic of conversation, uh, but that might be one that we set up to separately track ambulance revenue and cost, but it really doesn't, it may not really qualify as a special revenue fund under the new definition of the law. So that might be something that ends back up into the general fund. So we've got things like that going on as well that may take some of that 3.3 .3 million and reclassify it into another category uh, that is not uh, for, for use. Very good. Any other questions or comments this time? Alderman Bowers? Uh, I, I, I see another uh, one here, contracted services under insurance, $40,000. Now, is that for uh, administration costs or is that for uh, paying to lawyers, the outside uh, to lawyers' fees? That kind of stuff. <coughs> Tom, do you know what that contracted services is under, under that? I'm not sure. I'll okay. Check on that Could one. you check that out sure. for me, please? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, you get back to us on Monday on these issues? Absolutely. Okay. All right, anybody else today? We do have all the department heads here. Anybody like to ask any questions specific to them? 
right, thus far we've uh, had a plan presented to us, uh, one that will be uh, officially presented on Monday, uh, submitted to the council. Um, we've heard comments regarding uh, funding the uh, library and a plan for perhaps using reserve funds for that as well. Uh, things to think about on ourselves before we uh, come back and uh, actually make official motions on that. Are there any other ideas or thoughts at this time? All right, need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye opposed. Motion carries. Thank you all for coming. We're done. Really? No one had anything else.